With the recent update to DCS on the Open Beta branch, the Hornet has received its first precision guided air to ground munition, the AGM 65E Maverick. This is a Maverick missile equipped with a laser spot tracker for target acquisition and tracking. So, load yourself up with some laser Mavericks and let's get started. Switch Master Arm on. Select Air to Ground Master Mode. Open the Stores page and select MAV from the top. Change the laser code by pressing the UFC button on the right side. You will see the word code appears on the upfront controller. Press the push button beside that and use your keypad to enter your desired laser code. This needs to match the code used by whoever is designating for you. You can set the code for each individual missile by multiple depressions of the UFC button on the stores page. This will cycle through all your stations in turn and then cycle back to select all the stations again. You can select which station you would like to launch your missile from first by depressing the step button until the station you want is boxed. Press the MAV selection box at the top once again to open the seeker page. Note if you go directly to this page you will see a 30 second cooldown. This starts as soon as you select the MAV for the first time and you have your master arm on and are in air to ground mode. So ensure you've given it time for them to cool down before you start your attack run. On the Maverick Seeker page you can now select your fusing options. Instantaneous, Delay 1 for 0.015 second delay or Delay 2 for 0.1 seconds delay. You would select a delay if you wish to penetrate the target before the warhead detonates. You can also change the laser code and step the selected station here just like on the previous page. Note the status of your missile is shown on the top right, showing caged or uncaged. You can also see your current laser code on the bottom right. In the centre you will see the laser spotter reticule. This will show you where the seeker is looking. This is also represented on the HUD as an inverted triangle. If you wish to return to the stores page, simply press the MAV button again. So, now you're all set up, roll in on the target area. Ensure you have the Maverick Seeker page up. Uncage the Maverick by pressing the Uncage button on your throttle. Observe the Seeker head indicator on the HUD move as it searches. Request the laser be turned on by your JTAC or Wingman or you can laser with your own laser once the ATFLIR targeting pod is available. The seeker should now move onto the laser spot and stop. On the right of your HUD you will see MAV locked appear when the Maverick has successfully acquired the designated spot. Depress the pickle button and release your Maverick. Rifle. Once you've launched you're free to egress out of the target area. There's a few notes you do not receive any range information from the laser seeker, so you will have to visually estimate range, or you can set up a waypoint on the target area, and then set this waypoint up to use as a reference on your HUD. It's entirely possible for you to fire a Maverick from beyond its maximum range. The range will vary greatly depending on altitude. Generally speaking, if you want to be confident you're going to get a hit, fire from within 8 miles, but it can fire from much further away. But again, this comes down to how high up you are when you fire it. The laser must be maintained on target all the way up to impact, otherwise the Maverick will miss. Even a brief moment, the Maverick will lose tracking and it will ditch in the ground. Avoid masking the laser against your own airframe or terrain if you're the one providing the laser. In addition, you may wish to launch from a shorter distance than maximum range, simply so that the aircraft lasing for you is not tied down for as long. The Maverick is quite a slow missile and it can take a while to arrive on target sometimes. If you cannot spot the laser and you're certain you're looking towards the target, switch back to the stores page by pressing MAV again and ensure you've got a station selected with the correct laser code selected. In addition to using the AGM 65E Laser Maverick as a weapon, you can make use of it as a poor man's laser spot tracker sensor to assist in locating targets in the absence of a targeting pod. Load up your aircraft with at least one Laser Maverick and your preferred weapons. You simply have to have a JTAC or another aircraft designate your target like normal. However, once you've visually identified the target marked by the seeker head on your HUD, 
simply switch to another weapon and engage. This is a handy shortcut for locating targets if you're coordinating with other aircraft. So you might be asking why bother using a laser maverick, especially if you've got access to infrared or camera mavericks, which do not require a laser to maintain lock on target. Not only that, but they can also be used to locate and acquire targets without external assistance, and are truly fire and forget. Whilst the Hornet is not currently equipped with these, they will be coming to the Hornet in the future. Laser Mavericks can be used to fire on not only cold targets, but specific points on objects such as windows or tunnel entrances, buildings or even the ground. A camera Maverick uses contrast to identify targets and as such it struggles to target specific points. It is not uncommon for them to acquire incorrect objects or even fail to acquire a lock at all. This is particularly true of highly camouflaged objects. IR Mavericks generally can't lock buildings or anything without a very clear heat difference from its surroundings, sometimes jumping between many possible targets in an area with many hotspots. This means if the target is the same temperature as its surroundings, you simply cannot lock it. The AGM-65E Laser Maverick, in addition to being precise, is also great for very quick attacks. When provided with support, you're able to arrive at the target area, quickly locate the laser spot and then fire your missile and leave without the need to loiter in the airspace to manually search and locate targets. This makes them very popular weapons with forward air controllers, as you can be certain the missile will locate the same target without the need to confirm everybody is looking at the same thing. In DCS, the current simulation of imaging infrared is very limited, not truly simulating it. This is due for an overhaul at some point in the future. At present, it's more like a contrast filter. Take this example in Armour 3. You can clearly see this tank is warm, and that the tracks and engine bay are the hottest. Then, as the vehicle drives for longer, the tank as a whole gets brighter and hotter. Now take this pair of tanks. One is clearly cold, having been static for a long time, and the other has just arrived and is hot. Given enough time, it will cool down to match the same temperature around it. At which point, it becomes clear that an infrared maverick would struggle to lock onto these tanks. Whereas a laser-guided maverick would have absolutely no issues. On the other hand, if you look at the current simulation in DCS, you'll find that many objects are appearing as hot, even though they shouldn't be, such as buildings, trees, and even the sea. I expect, once the IR system is modernised, you will find laser mavericks far more useful for locking targets in certain environments over other models of maverick. If you wish to practice using laser mavericks, you can find a mission on the main menu, instant action, select FA-18C and scroll down to the AGM-65E Laser Maverick mission. This will set you up with a ground JTAC unit and will provide the lasing for you. You will have to communicate with them over the radio. Thanks for watching and take care.